Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual tour brought to you by Region 9 and the Arts Council with support from Wichita Falls Area Community Foundation. Today we're on location at the Wichita Falls Memorial Auditorium to enjoy the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater's presentation of Cinderella. We are joined by Mishik Libertor, Artist Director, and Val Libertor, Executive Director. At the end of the ballet, if there's time, we will ask or we'll let you ask some questions to Mishik and Val. So be preparing your questions and be ready to visit with our guests. Now let's join with Mishik and Val Libertor. Let's head on over to the auditorium. Hi, I'm Val Libertor, Executive Director for the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater. And today you're going to see excerpts of Cinderella. And with us, we have our Executive or Artistic Director, Mishik Libertor. Hey schools, welcome to the Memorial Auditorium today to see Wichita Falls Ballet Theater's performance of Cinderella. I'm just going to give you a little preview of what we're going to be seeing first. You're going to be joining Cinderella in Act 1 where the stepsisters have already wreaked all their havoc on her and she's been told she cannot go to the ball and she is in the forest and the fairy godmother is there to help her prepare to go to the forest magically. So there's a few things I want you to be looking for while you're watching this performance. Each season, you'll have fall, winter, spring, and summer, are going to dance, and they're going to present Cinderella with a gift. And I want you to really pay attention to all of those gifts. One of those gifts at the end of Act One is going to be very, very magical. So I want to see if you can follow along with the story and see which one of the gifts that is given to Cinderella turns into something very grand and wonderful. So we hope that you're going to enjoy Act One of Cinderella, presented to you by the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater and the company dancers. Stand by.
Oh, that was amazing. Beautiful dancing. Now, while the stage and scenery is being changed for Act 2, we'll take a few questions from the schools in the area. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask Mishik and Val. We can start. Does anyone have any questions out there? Don't be shy. One, a little preview of Act One of Cinderella. Um, right now, what you're seeing going on behind us is the behind the scene crew. So it's not just about the ballet dancers when we're putting on these productions, they're very important, but there's a whole crew that is behind the scenes that makes all of the magic happen that you see. So you're watching them right now sweep up all of the confetti that went off when the carriage came out. You'll see the sets in a minute move. So these sets are on what's called a line set and they're a weighted system that they put each one of these drops on and they move all the way up to what we call the deck so when we fly the the sets out they go all the way up to the top of the ceiling of the memorial auditorium pulley system. Uh, yeah it's like a pulley system that they have to wait to make sure that they're uh, properly weighted so it's not dangerous so that they don't just fall out of the sky and then you're also seeing um, they're going to be bringing in ballroom, which is the next scene that we're going to see from Act Two. But there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes that I don't think that a lot of people realize. We have a lighting designer here from Dallas that makes all of the dancers look absolutely beautiful, and she spends hours and hours working with the lights and working with the dancers and the costumes and the colors. Which helps create the mood during certain scenes and certain times. And then uh, we have our stage manager and technical director who are also uh, guests with us from Dallas that they make everything work properly and make sure it's safe for the dancers and our stage manager is the person that calls the show. Calling the show, what she means by that is, is someone's back there sitting in a chair, watching it on a monitor, and every single thing you see happen, from the dancers coming on the cues, she will give a little talk into a headset, really, not a mic, and then everything from the directors, or the guys on the catwalk way up above in the roof with the spotlights that'll see, shine on only the lead characters, from every set piece that moves to every little drop that comes in and out, is all called by one person, so she's kind of the director of the entire show once she learns it from the artistic director. And what's really interesting is that it's almost just like what the dancers learn. They learn choreography that we started back in January, learning Cinderella. The stage crew come in and they have one week to learn everything that they have to do in order to make the show look magical and seamless. And when sets move and things fly in and out, um, you know, they learned that starting on Monday. So we've been in the theater since Saturday, getting everything hung and the lights put up and, and everything ready. And then Full days. two full days to get everything onto the stage and then they learned basically their choreography um, from from the tech rehearsals that we've had we had a tech rehearsal Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and then our full dress rehearsal last night so they get four days to master I would say what the dancers have been working on since January to master so they are absolutely vital to what we do and um, incredible we have an incredible crew that we get to work with here in Wichita Falls um, with the local guys and then with our um, crew heads that come in from the Metroplex. And not only with crew, you have to imagine all of these beautiful costumes you see, not they're sewn by, well, my lovely wife here. However, usually in a professional company, they have a full wardrobe and that could be up to three to six seamstresses along with a wardrobe master who is in charge of making sure all of the sketches are made for each particular ballet and then that the specs or the design is being built by those seamstresses and sewing and bringing all these costumes together and fitting them on each dancer and the measurements and bringing them all to life. So it's not just that tech crew, there's also that wardrobe crew that helps bring everything together along with those dancers. It's, it's truly a big team effort in order to bring a show together. So we world premiered Cinderella back in 2018. That was the first time that we brought this production to uh, Wichita Falls. And uh, the set design was, was my design. And then Chris and Paul Lascott, who are a um, local couple here in Wichita Falls, helped me build my design and, and bring it into life. So these sets and costumes have actually been sitting in our warehouse since 2018. So when we go to redo a ballet and we bring it back out of the archive, as we call it, um, things need to be spruced up a little bit. and 
and dust maybe it dusted off and and you know kind of brought back to life but and and sometimes I change things because maybe the first time I didn't have enough time to get this finished or that set piece wasn't quite exactly what I imagined and then when I saw it on the stage I went oh I really needed to add this and that to it so it's really interesting to bring a ballet back that you've done a couple of years prior because it even though the audience may have seen it the first time it's not the same ballet the second time even the choreography changes because my dancers get stronger and they get you know older and they're able to do more and so um, it's a lot of fun actually as an artistic director to bring a ballet back and see what you did the first time and see how it can evolve the second time through and sometimes too you want to challenge the artist each dancer is uh during each show, sometimes casted in different roles. Sometimes you might be the, the sugar plum queen or the sugar plum princess and, and fairy. And then in this show, you could become a stepsister, which is a challenge for the artists that we like to put on them as people, as artists, in order to learn to be different characters and act and portray themselves in different ways. So I think what you're seeing right now behind me are the dancers on stage and this is kind of a pre-performance ritual that the dancers will do. They'll, they'll get on the stage, they'll try some steps, they'll warm up, bounce around, just kind of make sure that everything feels good, that their costumes are, are comfy and, and um, working right. The tricks that make you really nervous. Yes, they'll practice the tricks that maybe are a little more challenging. Um, today you're also going to see Sam Jones playing the role of the prince. He is a, a dancer from from Oklahoma City Ballet. Uh, we actually worked with him and his wife when we were dancers at Cincinnati Ballet. So we've known him quite a long time and we're thrilled that he's able to come down and dance with our company and uh, dance with our students because that's a, a real um, wonderful opportunity for our students to be able to dance with a professional dancer and just to kind of get that expertise. So we're thrilled that he's here with us today as well. So I think we are getting the thumbs up that she is is ready for us to uh, pull the main in and we will get ready for places for act two so you're going to see the ballroom of, of Cinderella and there's going to be some uh, crazy stepsisters that are going to finally make their entrance and a very very um, vibrant mother played by Erin Sherry, who is also a local actress and was a, as an alumni with the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater when she was a dancer. So she, um, we're honored that she gets to come back and join us as well. So I think we're ready to start act two.
Well, it looks like we might be having a little bit of technical difficulty with our video, but the strength and agility that those performers was putting on was amazing. The dancing was beautiful, and the skill that they have in order to perform the ballet is intense. So right away, just want to say they've already done a wonderful job and we will try to get back with them in just a little bit. We're trying to get the equipment set back up and we will be taking another look at what they're up to and get back to the ballet in just a bit. But still, it is a very impressive ballet, definitely varying a little bit from the, the Disney Cinderella that everyone comes to know and love, but still a wonderful performance and the performers are doing an amazing job. We do it. We, we will be taking questions in just a little bit, guys. So if you guys will just hold on and make sure you have your questions ready. Now, when you do ask questions, it's important that you unmute the Zoom call because we have the call on mute as default. So when you're about to ask questions, make sure that you unmute so that we're able to hear you guys. And there is going to be a little bit of a delay with that. So it's going to take around five to 10 seconds for us to hear your questions and then another five to 10 seconds for the answer to get back to you. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but that should be all right. It seems like we still have a little bit of time to go. Now, if you do have any questions, make sure you guys have them ready and feel free to ask anything that you may be wondering. If you don't know much about the ballet, feel free to ask anything that you may have a question about. I myself am a little curious as how they stay on their toes so long. I tend to stay on the flats of my feet, but it seems pretty impressive that they're able to be on their toes for so long and the strength that they must have in order to do that is pretty amazing. So we are going to still be having a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, are we going to be tossing? No? Oh, and the costumes that they have, they're pretty amazing. Val was the seamstress and put together a lot of those costumes and the work that she put in really shows off. They're beautiful, well-crafted, and they look pretty amazing, I gotta say. Even the, the stepmother and the stepsisters look a little imposing, a little menacing, and they look like they're all having a really great time during the performance. The, the ballet dancers are doing an amazing job and I can only imagine the amount of effort and time they've put into practicing these parts to be in sync and synchronized for those dances. It's got to be a challenge. So you really need to appreciate the amazing work that they've done and the amount of effort that they've put into this performance. It's going to be an amazing show if we get a chance to get out and see it. I believe it is this Saturday. Looks like we're starting to get the image back up. So yes, it is the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater's Cinderella. That is going to be May 8th at 1 p.m. at the Memorial Auditorium. So feel free to ask your parents to take you down there and they'll get to enjoy the show as well. It's great for all ages. So if you want to head on down and see the performance live in person, well, that is the time to do it. May 8th, 1 p.m. Memorial Auditorium. That's going to be tomorrow. What do you think the sets? The sets for them were amazing. Did you see behind there? It, Amazing what you can do with a stage, with that background, the curtains and everything, just did an amazing job and really brings that feel in that you're really at the ball with those dancers. The staircase was something that I didn't expect them to have on the stage. They did an amazing job with the props, with the set, with the lighting, very well lit, spot on for those actors. It's really hard to find the light when you're on the stage like that. Uh, being at the KFDX studio where we also have to find our light, it, it can be a challenge at times. And for the production people to be able to follow them, they are also doing a really great job. And as they said before, they a lot of the production group only had about a week to learn where they had to bring those pieces and how to set up the lights and track everything as it goes. So they've put in the work clearly and they've done an amazing job so far. I'd love to see the rest of the performance if we can get that camera working. Nope, looks like we're still down for a little bit. There's a little bit of difficulty with our equipment, but it'll be okay. We will be getting back to them in just a second. Not only was the set and the performance and the costumes just great, but it looks like they're having a great time out there as well. It's got to be a lot of fun to be able to get out and dance with such amazing dancers and to have that ability and to have that performance that's just something that's just fun to watch. Um, it's going to be a great show tomorrow, so make sure if you guys have the chance to get out there and check it out, that you do so, because that's something that you don't get to see very often. 
The Cinderella from Disney, definitely a little bit different. There's not much talking in this, but the actors did an amazing job being able to emote through their actions and through the dance itself. Matching up with the music was just a joy to behold. And they've been doing a really great job just demonstrating what you can do without vocals, with just dance, and just being able to emote through your actions. A really great job with them, I gotta say. Mishik and Val did a great job putting this thing together, and I'm glad that they were able to dust off those costumes after two years of having them in storage because it is something to behold. We do expect them to be able to get back to us in just a little bit, so I'm so sorry, guys, that things have been a little held, hold, held up a little bit. Um, we are working very hard to get things back up and running to be able to get back with Mishik and Val so that they can respond to some of your questions, and I hope you guys are making sure to get those questions ready because they are more than excited to answer any that you may have. And as I said before, you're going to want to unmute the Zoom call in order to contact us. We're going to have we have it set up by default for it to be muted, so you will have to unmute it for us to hear you. So make sure you guys don't forget that when you ask your questions. A um, few things that. I definitely want to know from them, again, how they stay on their feet like that, how long um, they rehearsed and got that ready. I know they started back in January, and that's not a very long time to get this down and ready, but they did an amazing job. It is going to be really great to see the live performance coming up tomorrow, May 8th, at 1 p.m. at the Memorial Auditorium. Looks like there are plenty of seats out there, so you should be able to get one if you want to go see that in person. It is a very exciting performance, very athletic. You could see that those dancers were putting in all the energy that they had into those twirls, spins, plies, and all those other ballet moves that they did. Just an amazing job. A um, lot of flexibility involved with those dancers as well. They're probably doing a lot of stretches before the show in order to kick so high and to do those aerial splits. Just an amazing performance that they've been doing so far and we will be getting back to them no, as soon as we no, can. We, we may have to discontinue due oh. to technical difficulties. Well, it looks like the technical difficulties may be keeping us from getting back to them, so we're going to hold on for just a little bit. We might not be able to get the camera back up, but the act and a half that we did see was really great. And if you want to see the rest, then please go on down and check it out at the Wichita Falls Auditorium. Well, I just want to give a big thank you to Mishik and Val. Congratulations to you guys on the amazing performance for what we did get to see. And thank you to the Wichita Falls Ballet Theater for welcoming us on the virtual tour today. And also, thank you guys for joining us. I know we did have a little bit of difficulty towards the end, but we also want to give a special thanks to the KFDX Newsroom for making this all possible. And on behalf of Region 9 and the Arts Council, Thank you and have a great day.